Hey guys, it's Sean with OGS, back with another episode. And today, I thought I would take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the 250 cross flow. Some might call it the underdog, some might say it's a waste of time. Why would you muck around with a six cylinder when you can go to you know, a V8 or a Clevo or a Windsor. But why don't we spend a little bit of time together just sort of having a bit of a chat about this particular motor. A good buddy of mine gave me this motor basically for next to nothing. He put a 302 in his, uh, I believe it was an XFU. So he had no use for this motor. I said, well, why not bring it over here? And uh, I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do with it, but I've got one spare lying around sort of thing. So let's take some time and identify all the parts that we've got going on here. So starting over here, you can see that this is the power steering reservoir with its pulley over there, which would connect to the main crankshaft. It's got the bracket. Sometimes it's actually quite difficult to find this bracket. So it's good that I've got a spare one over here. You've got a clutch fan. You have your alternator. You have your air conditioning pump down here. It's got the original uh, exhaust manifold. It's a cast manifold. You got your engine mounts. Of course the block's uh, cast and it's quite dirty at the moment. Moving around to the back, you got your flywheel over here with all of its teeth. You've got assorted hoses and lines that come out of the, uh, the power steering and the air conditioning pump. Moving around on this side here, you can see the inlet manifold over here and you can see it's been taped off to make sure nothing gets in here. So let's have a sneak peek if we can. Oh God, there it is there. Okay. So from what I know from this motor, I believe that it has, a, it has had a bit of a freshen up, which basically probably means that the uh, cylinders have been bored out to a larger diameter and possibly new pistons have been added or fitted rather. But from what I can see here, it doesn't really have any aftermarket parts. Uh, let's talk about what people mostly do with 250 cross flows. Yeah, so basically uh, this motor is basically stock and um, you might have had a bit of a refresh internally, which basically means that the bore or the uh, pocket in which the cylinder actually sits has been enlarged slightly to freshen it up a bit to ensure the tolerances are nice and tight. But besides that, by and large, I believe that it's got a stock cam. You know, these, uh, comp these engines are very, very commonplace and basically found in lots of X-series uh, Ford Falcons and Fairlands and all sorts of different things. So you start off with the Carby version and then we have the uh, XE that's sitting over there, which is actually an EFI version. So the EFI version has got slightly more power, but perhaps maybe it's easy to have a bit of a play with the Carby version and easy to get more power out of it because EFI, obviously that's computer driven and there's a lot more sensors. So here's the same motor. It's a 250 cross flow. It's an EFI version. There's not as many EFI versions uh, floating around. Um, the XE has this particular motor, which I'm pretty happy with, but you can see there's a fair bit more going on here in terms of vacuum lines and sensors and everything like that, because it's got, got to actually have some sort of input into the computer in the terms of sensors. So there's a lot more going on because it needs to tell the computer exactly what to do and how to function under different, different driving conditions. I grabbed a, a piston from an old 308 that I got lying around just to sort of have a bit of a chat about uh, the 250 cross flow and the bore and the stroke. So this is the bore, which is the uh, dimension of the actual piston itself. And then you've got the conrod there and then the stroke, which comes up and down within the cylinder wall or the engine block. So what makes a 250 cross flow a 250 cross flow is it's actually under square. And what that basically means is that the stroke is longer than the ball, which means that, yeah. So for example, this is 99 and this is 93. It's got a lot more distance go up and down uh, than perhaps other engines that are over square. Over square means you've got a short rod and then you've got quite a large piston. So the distance from, uh, from it going up and down is actually smaller. So therefore 
some people do say that it's easier to rev because it's got less distance. That's why people refer to the 250 Crossflow as a bit of a tractor motor. So a lot of the reason why they refer to a 250 Crossflow as a bit of a tractor motor or a little bit agricultural is for two reasons. It's a very simple motor. I guess it's got that reliability, but also with its long stroke, because it's under square, it produces uh, a lot of torque. And that's a byproduct of an under square motor. Moving on to the Barra, the same thing actually applies. This is also an under square motor and basically the exact same bore and the stroke. So some people might say this thing doesn't like to rev, but uh, it's got the torque to get you off the line. Now, obviously when you're talking about torque, uh, that's the stuff that gets you moving and so that sort of pushback fuel that you get when you're driving your car. Horsepower is generated when you reach, say, the peak RPM or just about, and it spits out just how much power the thing is able to produce. Well, there you go. Well, how do you actually make power from this thing? Well, first of all, you probably piss off a few things you don't need. I mean, who needs air conditioning? Who needs a power steering? All those things are driven off the crankshaft, which is underneath the fan, just over here, and those things zap power. So maybe you want to do away with them. Secondly, I mean, you wouldn't have the seatbelt, but if you think about an engine, all it really is, is there's three components. You've got your air, your fuel, and your spark. Let's talk about where all that stuff enters, what actually happens, and where it exits. So the whole thing is, you've got a carburetor, or EFI system sitting right on your manifold over here, okay? So all of your air and fuel is going down in here. Because this is a simple motor, you can see everything. It's phenomenal, isn't it? Anyway, so let's say you've got your carby, let's just say it's, it's the stock one. It's feeding in air and fuel straight down here, okay? Then it's going in and you've got your pistons, which we talked about before but you need some spark. Well, what do you think these things are? Okay, so the spark is created with the spark plug there to create the explosion to allow the piston to go up and down, etc., etc. And then, of course, the exhaust gases are exited out of this exhaust manifold here. So, basically, if you think about it, it's in, something happens in here, magic or something like that, and then you've got exhaust which comes out there. And then you have the ancillary bits and pieces which makes it sort of nice to drive like power steering and air conditioning over here. You can run without an alternator but you won't be going far, far very soon. I mean, it's like you just run out of juice in your battery. So this basically recharges your battery as you go along. And you don't need the seatbelt over here. That's just to lift it. So you wanna make some big power well, basically what that involves is modifying any of those three variables as I talked about before, air, fuel, and spark. So let's go with fuel to begin with and possibly a little bit more air. So what have I got here? I've got an old quadrajet in my hand. It's a four barrel and you can see because there's, there's two and then there's two over there. Let's say you want to add a diabolically more amount of fuel. Number one, you need to change your manifold because this is not going to fit on. See the bolt, it's four barrel. This would suit two barrel. So let's say you stick that on there like so. So you've changed the, uh, the intake manifold to suit. What you've got is an issue though because you may overfuel it for the rest of the supporting mods on the particular motor. There's no point overfueling it because you're just going to waste fuel and you're not actually going to get more power. So when you upgrade one particular thing, you're gonna to have to think about everything else. So you've got the quaddy on there with your uh, upgraded inlet manifold. Let's say you want to then uh, upgrade everything else. Well, let's talk about that. Got myself a big stick here with a few lumpy bits and bobs hanging off it. And this is the camshaft, what they call the brains of the engine. Each of these lobes are machined on precisely in the right location to basically tell what the inlet and outlet uh, what to do. So one of the biggest things you can do is change the brain. And what you can do with this particular motor is get it to be more aggressive with the inlet and outlet according to your fuel ratio and a whole bunch of other calculations which you'll need to figure out to make sure that your engine makes a bit more power. All right, so basically you've um, 
you've upgraded your fuel system, let's say that you've bought out your pistons and tightened up the tolerances, you've got some, some new pistons and everything's all been redone with your camshaft and then you've got your exhaust. This is a cast manifold here and you can get aftermarket ones like pacemaker and it just helps the uh, flow of the exhaust gases escape quite nicely. And then you do all that work, you spent 10 grand and you made 200 horsepower. Well, what do you do next? If you need more power, add one of these bad boys, the Wuhan war whistle. Basically what it does is it takes your exhaust gases, spins the turbine over here, careful of my fingers, Ooh. and then what it does is it reroutes it back around. So with a carby, you can push it back through or you can get it electronically, electronically fuel controlled and all that jazz. But basically what it does is it's gonna provide a far more airflow and really push it in there. So as I mentioned before, it's air, fuel and spark. So pick, take your pick and then sort of focus on that. And then obviously you need supporting mods to make sure that everything else works. That's how you make more than 200 horsepower and one of these bad boys. Another way is a supercharger. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show you sort of thing, but basically it's like a screw goes like that and it compresses the air down. Think of a mini sort of air compressor and it's driven off the uh, crankshaft, which means it's parasitic. It zaps a little bit of power, just like your uh, air conditioning and your power steering pump there. But what it does, it controls those tw twin screws, compresses the air, forces heaps more air into the intake manifold and then thus Away you go, more power. You're looking at the 250 cross slow, then you look at the barra. Dimensionally, they're relatively similar. You can see that the head is far larger. And let's talk a little bit about that. So from the block down, dimensionally, in terms of stroke and bore, they're very similar, right? But then you get to the head. So the camshaft is buried deep within down into the block, whereas you've got the barra and you've got a dual overhead cam. So what it is, is about Control, controlling your inputs and your outputs. I'm talking about your fuel, your air, everything. Electronic, uh, electronic fuel injection is the way to go when you're controlling everything because you want to tweak everything so it's just right. And that's exactly why the Barra is so superior. It's got electronic fuel injection, it's got the dual overhead cams, it's got um, you know two valves for the exhaust and two valves for the intake so everything is really precisely controlled so the, the more you can control things obviously the more power you can actually make so the 250 cross flow the head is a very old design now there is a bloke named uh, bob Crogdile. i hope that i'm pronouncing it correctly which came out with a dual overhead cam based on a jaguar i want to do another video on that one because that's a really really interesting engine that that guy built and if you had some of uh, some marketing skills or maybe a youtube channel maybe you could sell could have sold a few more of them but uh, i wish i could get my hands on them but i don't have a spare 65 grand <laughs> but the key is that if everything's exactly the same in terms of this stroke and everything like that basically what it comes down to is your inputs whether it's your fuel or uh, air and also your precision and the way you can control things which basically comes to your head whether you, you can control the valves, you can control the airflow and everything like that. So I really do think that the potential of the 250 cross flow lies in the head. If you can figure out a way to put a different head on it that is newer technology, does away with the camshaft that's actually in the block, then you're, you're halfway to basically creating that thing over there. You know, I've got a little bit of uh, mechanical sympathy for the old 250 cross flow. I'm not sure why. I'm not that much of a go fast kind of guy. I like the nostalgia. I like uh, sort of, you know, being transported back into time. I like that it is what it is type thing. <laughs> but um, gee, if you could figure out how to change the head over to something else, I think that would unlock a lot of the potential. Obviously give the bottom end to freshen up and tighten up those tolerances, get some new pistons and resize a few different things. But I think if you change the two camshafts sitting in the top over here and brought that over here, I reckon you'd be able to do something. I wonder whether that head fits on that. Maybe we'll find out. As always, thanks for checking out our channel. Today's been a lot of fun. I like deep diving into technical things. I hope it's educational, informative. If I've got something wrong, please let me know because I'm happy to learn. Take it easy, guys.